Hey everybody, welcome to another Digital Making at Home video. Uh, this one here following our theme of making video games, I thought I'd add another one to the stockpile and put one in about uh, starting a splash screen in your game or having the coin in or start screen. You often see these screens at the beginning of video games when they like press any key to start. Um, they used to happen in like the old coin screens, the old coin operated video games, that'd be the thing that was popping up, you put your coins in and then it would enter the game. Um, and so we're going to make one of those because it's really nice to have one at the start of your game just to put some instructions on or maybe give a little bit of backstory to try and hook the person into playing it. Because when your game is one among hundreds in the arcade, uh, it's nice to have something that can just drag people in a bit. It's also a nice little clean start to a game. So it's a nice way of opening it for the player and letting them know that, oh, the game has begun now. There's a new change. There's a change in state here and the game has started. So without any further ado, let's crack on. Um, I'm already logged into my Scratch account. Uh, and you can log into yours, we'll go to my name here, we'll click on my stuff because I'm going to be adding to the archery game that I made previously so if you haven't seen the other video that I made before with my sidekick Zay about the archery game it's worth going and having a look at it because I'm going to be adding to that game so if you haven't seen that yet, go away and have a look, build the archery game and come back if you don't want to do that, that's fine, you can still follow along um, and add the principles to your own games in any way that you'd like, I mean it still works in any other game, it's just that building on the archery game here is something that you can do alongside me. So I'm going to see inside my game, you'll see here I've got my backdrops, uh, I've got my sprite here with my arrow and all my code for hitting the different colours, uh, I've got my timer here that we added and my scores, keeping scores, so when I click the green flag it resets my score. Starts flicking an arrow around the screen, I can fire, Whoop, no points because I missed. <laughs> running out, Whoop, no points. <laughs> okay. So we've got our game here, it's working. What we can do now is we want to add a start screen. And there are a couple of ways that you could do that. You can do it with different backdrops and things like that. But the way that I like to do it is to add a massive sprite that can cover up the whole screen. And then you can remove that when you don't want it anymore. Now the workspace here, you can see the stage in your Scratch project, that's 480 by 360 pixels. So you can add your own sprite. If you want to paint one, you can use the paintbrush down here on sprite. Hang on a second, I'll just move myself out of the way so that you can see what I'm talking about, there we go, and so we've got this here, so here's paint, uh, you can paint your own sprite, you can also upload a sprite, or you can have a surprise sprite, it will just pick one for you, but if you paint, it will open up this thing here, and then so you can just take a square, uh, we'll fill it with purple, it's black outline, we'll draw a massive square around here, and you'll see that it will create our sprite, which we can then move and cover up our whole screen with. And now we have a splash screen. Um, I don't want to do it that way. I've made one previously, so I'm going to go up here, upload a sprite. I'm going to go to my game elements folder, which is where I keep all the things I use to make games. Choose the coin screen or the splash screen that I want and import it. Okay, and it brings it in for me. So there it is. So I'm going to have to place it so it covers the whole screen just the way I want. Fantastic. All right, we can see it there. And just I'll show you what it looks like. So we'll go a bit here. It's got the name of my game. It's got some instructions for people how to play my game. Wait for the arrow to be pointing at the target, then press space to fire. And I'm going to have it press any key to start the game. So that's kind of important um, because we need to know what it's sensing and what it's waiting for. So I've got any key. On your one, you might have spacebar or F key. Click the mouse. It can be whatever you want. Um, but I've got mine set to be any key because I like doing that sort of thing. I like it to be easy for my user. So our green flag kicked as a universal starter, and we're going to use the green flag here to kick off our coin screen, which will then disappear and kick off the rest of our project, kind of like a, a chain of events, like a domino chain. So the first thing we have is our green flag, and we've got our sprite here. So when I click the green flag, I want to make sure that what happens is that my sprite, I'm going to go to looks, and I want my sprite to show. I definitely want it to be there when I click the green flag. Okay, it's the first thing I want it to do. I want it to cover up my game so people can't see anything else happening. Once I've got my sprite shown, and it's definitely covering up my screen, I want it to do something uh, to wait for a key press. Okay, that's the thing I'm waiting for it to do. So I have wait until. Okay, and you'll see here again we've got the gem shaped hole. So I go down to the things that are gem shaped and I'm looking for key pressed. So it's under sensing and I've got key space pressed. I'll drag it in here, pull down my little menu and one of the options is any key. So now when I click the green flag, my cover will come over. It will wait until any key is pressed and then I want it to send a message. I want it to broadcast out to the rest of my game a new message. 
which can be anything that you want. Again, you can call your messages anything that you like. You can call it Fred, Steve, Dave, Jane, doesn't matter. But if you call them something sensible, something that people are going to recognize if they come and see your work or if you come back to it after a time, it'll be much better. So this message here, I'm going to call it coin in. Okay, just because that's old school. So I want it to broadcast coin in, and then I might get it to play a sound as well. So I'm going to import a new sound. Import one from here. And I want an effect. What? Oh, here we go. Perfect. So that's coin. So I'll put the sound in. I love that. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And so I go to my code, and I take my sound, start coin, start sound coin, and it'll broadcast. So when I go like this, okay, uh, broadcast coin in, and then the last thing I want it to do is I want it to disappear. I want it to hide again. So it's now, green flag is clicked. It's waiting, I've shown it's waiting for any key to press. I'll press D on my keyboard and my game goes through. My sprite disappears and it plays my coin sound, which is great. But I have to get all the things that were set with green flag clicked. I need them to be kicked off when I broadcast my coin in message now. So I don't want these to start until someone has pressed the any key. At the moment, all of these are going while my sprite is up and that's fine, but there are other things that are happening. So my timer is still counting down as well. And I need to stop that from happening until the game starts. Not very fair that you click green flag, read the instructions, and then your time runs out. So we'll get rid of this. We'll come back with our events. And we say, when I receive coin in, we click it there. We check our other backdrop and our other sprites if we have any, but we don't. So we check our backdrop. We get rid of this. We pop our when I receive coin in. And it will set our timer to 15. It will do all the things we want it to do. We check our arrow. There's no green flags. When I receive coin in. So we press our green flag. Our archery screen cap comes over, our splash screen. I push any key, so I'll push uh, enter, and my game begins. My time is counting down. I can get score. Okay, so that's my game. It's all working. The only thing I needed to do is now kill my game when it finishes. And the other thing that I can add to it as well at the end is I can add a game over screen, but we'll do all that in another video. For now, we've got a really nice little coin screen. We click our green flag, it pops up again. It's killed all our other scripts. Uh, and then all we have to do is press a key to start and our game begins again. The timer goes up, the score goes back to zero and we're ready, set, all good to go. So keep making stuff at home, everybody. Remember that you can share your projects to us at rpf.io slash home, filling out the form. Make sure you get your parents' permission before you do that. Uh, and even though we're all hanging out at home, everybody, doesn't mean we can't keep making cool stuff together. So keep watching out for our videos. We'll be doing stuff every week. Remember, next week there's a new theme, so keep your eyes peeled. And I'll see you soon.